Um, the first thing we're going to do is create the tables because those aren't created by default. Um, we have to define what uh, the table names are and what the values are and what they should accept and all that sort of stuff. And, and if you're not familiar with this stuff, it's just, you know, it's pretty basic. SQLite 3, I can probably refer you to some pretty good tutorials. Um, I think if you just look up SQLite tutorial... Uh, this is probably where I got the majority of my information was this, uh, this first one, Zetacode. He has some great tutorials, and um, I think he has one specifically on its integration with Python, so I'd highly recommend you read that tutorial if you're really struggling with this. Um, so basically all I'm doing is I'm calling this cursor object um, per table. And uh, execute is kind of the command that you use to execute SQL code, uh, kind of as it, its name implies. Um, so I'm saying create table, if it doesn't already exist, called films. Uh, and this is the first table, and this is going to store all the film data. And, and one thing I should probably point out first, too, is that this data structure that I'm, I'm building is pretty rudimentary and really not as ideal as it probably should be because uh, I was just kind of doing it a little faster than I probably should have but you know if you were to build it out um, in a more useful way you would probably create your own table for directors and writers uh, and things like that so that you could actually have uh, more of a many-to-many -many or one-to-many relationship between films and directors and films and writers that sort of thing um, because sometimes these are uh, more than one, which, you know, for for this purpose, it really doesn't matter because I'm not really going to do much with this data. But if you were to do, if you actually had a use for this data, um, you would probably want to get a little smarter about the data structure that you build out. So basically all this is, is I'm defining each of the uh, table elements. I can kind of show you what that look like looks like a little bit better. Um, in films, I'm defining an ID, and that's kind of default to all SQL tab uh, table, blech, tables. Uh, you need an ID. That's a unique identifier for each row. Um, then I'm defining a title, which has a uh, type of text, and the ID has a type of integer, and it's the primary key, which I won't really get into, but that just basically means that it's uh, it has to be unique. So you can't have two um, IDs with the same integer value that's on the same table. That's impossible. Uh, it'll throw an error if you do that. Um, the ranking, that's um, the actual movie rating. I can show you that. Uh, right here. So like 9.3, for instance, is the ranking. And uh, this data type rel or real or whatever it is uh, is basically a non-integer number so like 1.5 it's a it's a floating point or um, uh, has a decimal place that's all that really means an int is an integer uh, meaning it's a whole number so one two three four five etc no decimal place um, just uh, clear that up a little bit. Uh, release date um, is text, page URL is text. Most of these are text, uh, just to keep things simple. Um, and then I'm also creating a uh, actors table. And this table um, is you know set up pretty much the same way create table if it doesn't exist. Uh, unique ID. And then it, the one thing that's unique with this one is it's uh, it has a field called film ID, which is referencing this ID right here and again if you're not used to the concept of relational databases uh, this is basically just a way of saying uh, of um, mapping related data so you know if uh, if you have an actor with a film ID of one and there's uh, a row um, in the film table with an ID of one you're, you can relate the data of this to that film and it's it's a extremely useful thing and allows you to not have a lot of repeated data 
um, un unnecessarily. So that's that. Um, then you have an actor name, character name, and a ranking. All of this stuff is the same as in here, except for the film ID, which is unique to the table itself. Um, and then I have these uh, functions, these two functions, which uh, basically just drop the table, which means delete the table if it, uh, if it exists. And I have those because, um, I, and I actually call them each time you run this script, uh, you can remove this code if you want in your own personal project, but I did that because uh, when I was building this, I didn't want to have a bunch of repeated records, you know, like 50 rows of the same film, because I called this, uh, this spider 50 times with the same input system. Um, so I'm dropping the table each time it runs. You can get rid of that. I'm calling it right here on create tables. So basically it's saying drop these tables before you actually create them if they exist. Uh, and that's, that's kind of important for not getting a bunch of nasty data that you don't need. Um, I wrote this function which um, cleans money strings. Uh, I can show you what that looks like as far as what the money strings are. Um, I wanted to capture like the budget and the gross uh, um, profits of each film if they exist. Uh, so basically, this data comes in kind of nasty. Uh, for instance, right here, it has uh, all this extra text here that comes in with it, and I didn't really know a good way of using like a regular expression or something to get rid of that. So I wrote a simple function that basically just uh, loops through each of the characters in this string and it checks uh, if it's a currency symbol and it, if it is a currency symbol it adds it to the list um, and then it checks if it's a comma and if it's a comma it adds it to the list and then if it checks if the character is a digit and if it's a digit it adds it to the list and then um, last but not least it checks if it's an empty space uh, it sets this stop adding uh, variable to true, um, which is basically, I can kind of describe why that, why I'm adding that. Uh, let's go here. So for instance, if there was a uh, number, which there is here, it might append uh, this number to the actual um, uh, you know, amount of money that's right there. And you don't want that because that would be a wrong value, obviously. So I'm checking to see if there's a space. And if there is a space in between, uh, in between the last number and, um, and this other part of the string, it's saying, hey, don't add anymore because we don't need any more of it because we know that numbers do not uh, have spaces in them. So it's just a simple assumption, and it does a pretty good job. I have not had any issues with it so far. Um, this is the one thing you could change. I've only included this uh, dollar symbol. You could add more currency symbols if you wanted to. I ran into some issues with that um, because it's a lot of the other currency symbols are not uh, ASCII. They're Unicode, so it throws some errors, and I'm, I'm sure there's an easy way of getting past it. I just didn't really spend the time to look into it because it is kind of a uh, unnecessary thing in my case. Um